morning and thanks for tuning in to another edition of USF College Week, your source for news, sports, and the latest in what's happening around the USF community. I'm Abby Satter. I'm Alex Heinert. Today on College Week, we'll tell you about a new self-defense class here on campus, introduce you to some exciting local artwork, and show you the dramatic conclusion of USF Dream Job. But first, here's Abby with our top story. In response to the recent Daphne Wright murder trial, the University of Sioux Falls has been conducting a campus research project regarding the death penalty. USF Professor of Social Science and Criminal Justice Beth O'Toole has been heading up the 45-question phone survey, the first of its kind in the state. The survey is designed to help assess South Dakota's attitude toward capital punishment in our country and our state as well. O'Toole says that the project has really proven timely for residents of the state. It seems the perfect time, and so Really, um, the second night that we were calling last week was the night that the jury was deliberating in the Daphne Wright case. It's very timely. It's on people's minds. Um, what we've found as we've been calling is that lots of people have opinions. They have been thinking about it, and it seems the perfect time to be asking these kinds of questions of South Dakota voters. So, okay. O'Toole says the results will be published in an academic journal once the findings are complete. In other news, students here at USF are making an effort to stay safe around campus. College Week reporter Jordan Erickson has more on the story. The USF campus has always been seen as a pretty safe place. But after last week's Virginia Tech shooting, every campus, even USF, is looking for ways to stay safe and avert another tragedy. One student doing his part is Josh Carvalho. Josh, a freshman at USF, has been teaching a local self-defense class in the Stewart Center for the past two months. Well, what we're trying to do here at uh, USF is put together a defensive tactics and self-defense program based upon two Israeli systems, Krav Maga and Kapop, that have been brought over to the United States. Josh learned Krav Maga and Kapop in high school and became a certified instructor. Now he started the self-defense class to pass on these techniques to others. It's a free of charge program. We're offering this completely uh, free of charge to anybody. This can be USF students. We've also been open to the idea of admitting anybody else, um, anyone from Augie, the general community. So it's really very open door policy and right now we're trying, just trying to expand. The classes mix endurance exercises with techniques that are based on instinctive movements in real situations. And with the recent attacks still fresh in everyone's minds, Josh is doing his part to ensure USF is prepared for the worst. It's very tragic, and it's very tragic that it happened, and I believe that this could have been averted. And I think with proper training and with a little bit of awareness, we can stop this from happening again. The group is applying to become an official USF club this week, and Josh hopes to continue to teach this class throughout the spring and next fall. And for those that question the need for this class, to Josh, the answer is obvious. It's far too easy to write it off of, we live in Sioux Falls, we live in a community where this would never happen, where we'd never actually need to use this. But what I would really ask people to think about is the versatility of this. And I think this is really important and anybody that thinks that it won't happen to them or that they don't need it is really missing out on something. For USF College Week, I'm Jordan Erickson. Thanks Jordan. The classes take place on Wednesday and Thursday nights at 8 o'clock in USF Stewart Center. Everyone is invited to attend. Coming up after the break, we'll finally announce the winner of the USF Dream Job Competition. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The long-anticipated inaugural USF Bible Bowl was held last Saturday in Java City. A number of students gathered to test their knowledge on two selected books of the Bible, Mark and 1 Thessalonians. Four teams competed in the double elimination tournament hosted by Dr. Brian Gregg and Dr. John Learman of U the USF Theology Department and the Bible Bowl enthusiast Alex Heinert. Participants shared their overall view of the event and what they hope to see happen in the future competitions with College Week's Aaron Heinert. I think it's a great event. First off, um, represented the Sanhedrin today. I uh, got the first ever championship. This is a good, good chance to come out and uh, enjoy uh, USF festivity. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the best, best stuff we got going around here is, is just stuff like this. That I mean, there were some teams who just were here just to have a blast, and I think that's what we had today. Hey, I would possibly do it again. Guys, should we read it this time? I might read the material. We might read the material. We might study next time. next time. I think that would help our chances out of knowing the material a little bit better. Yeah, maybe next year we could answer in the form of questions. 
maybe like what is Bible Bowl? Good job, guys. I am Adam Seif. The winner of Saturday's competition was a team called the Sanhedrin and included Adam Seif, Jared Slykehouse, Michael Hedges, and Dave Campbell. Congratulations, guys. Next time you find yourself walking the halls of local businesses or hospitals in town, take a minute to notice the art decorating the walls. The chances are good that the artist could be from here in the Sioux Falls area. As College Week's David Christofferson explains, local artists are finding ways to get their art and their names noticed without going through the gallery circuit. As you walk around the city of Sioux Falls, you're likely to notice some wonderful art decorating the walls and hallways of area businesses. What's even more interesting is who the art is done by. More and more, it seems, area businesses are choosing to use local art rather than the more traditional art to decorate their hallways. USF's own Cece Cooper explains how she feels about the local art movement here in Sioux Falls. Well, I think that's how it should be. Um, you know, if, if more and more corporations would use local artists, it would obviously add to the economy of the Sioux Falls art um, community. And there are a lot of good artists and photographers here in town. You don't have to go to Minneapolis or to Omaha to get good quality art. We have several galleries in town who represent local artists. Um, and I know more and more uh, corporations are doing that. For instance, the Avera McKinnon, um, their new uh, psychiatric facility, all of the artwork in that was uh, done by local artists. According to Cooper, venues for displaying art in Sioux Falls are limited. Several of the coffee houses will exhibit work and call it McDowell Insurance. Um, Avera, has, there's a, several pieces in the Avera Hospital from local artists, um, even Sanford, you know, and we're hoping, in the art community, we're hoping that the new Sanford Children's Floor will uh, use local artists mm -hmm. as well. Carly Ward, who is a senior art major here at USF, who also works at Sankofa, has started sort of an art gallery at Sankofa, and it's mainly USF students that's, that are showing there, and I think it's going to can use that format, but there's not a whole lot of places for students to show. For USF College USF Week, College I'm David Christofferson. Thanks, Dave. After three weeks of grueling competition, USF Dream Job has finally reached its conclusion. Host Alex Heinert takes us inside Tuesday's final showdown between Jake Iverson and Mick Westerman. I missed the substitution. <laughs> Two of them, actually, to tell you the truth. But other than that, not too shabby. Strong first half. Strong <laughs> first half. No comment. They both, they both do well. You know, it's just up in there. It's just up in there. Leave, I'll leave it to you. I thought Nick did a very good job. He's, he has a good enunciation. You could hear him very well and had good things to say. Nick looks sporty. Jake doesn't look sporty. Well, we surveyed the, the audience and um, it was pretty much split. A lot of them like uh, Jake's uh, enthusiasm and energy. A lot of others like mix uh, knowledge of the game. So it's going to be a tough decision. Your winner of the 2007 USF Dream Job Competition is Mick Westerman, ladies and gentlemen. Your new boss of the USF Dream Job Wow. Wow, that's nuts. That pretty much sums up everything that went on out there. 
That was fun. It that was. was a lot of fun. I didn't. I didn't think I was doing that. Oh, dude. You deserved I, it. Uh, you deserve I, it. I, I This man deserved it just as much as I did. We like the kid here on Dream Job. It's not actually the next job. Well, no. <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> Heck, at least we made it farther than seen. <laughs> <laughs> At least you beat scene. At least you beat scene. Hey, over Hey. You can catch Mick in action next fall at all the sporting events in the world's only Stewart Center. Coming up next on Crosstalk, College Week's Jake Iverson sits down with Sullivan RD and USF icon Karen Sumner. You don't want to miss this, folks. Don't go away. Hello and welcome to another installment of Crosstalk. I'm of course Jake Iverson and with me today is Sullivan Resident Director Karen Sumner. Karen, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Jake. So Karen, you've, you're somewhat of a legend here around Sioux Falls. I mean, you started at the Sioux Falls College as a student. Mm -hmm. You moved on to Resident Director, uh, Campus Pastor. Anything I'm missing here? <laughs> um, student Leadership Coordinator, Activities. Homecoming, orientation. And not to mention queen. True. Reigning True. queen Raining. of Sioux Falls College. Mm. All right, and so we're going to jump in. We're going to start at the beginning because that's the best place to start. Uh, how did you choose the Sioux Falls College as where you wanted to start your higher ed edu education? I was between Bethel, Bethel and Sioux Falls College and didn't really know which, which one to pick. I thought they were both great schools. Um, a youth pastor here in Sioux Falls at First Baptist Church contacted me and said, you know what, why don't you come to Sioux Falls College, work with my youth group, hang out with us. And I said, great. And I loved it from the first day I stepped on campus. <laughs> and when you, were, when you were a student, did you ever think you would come back as a resident director? No. I wasn't involved in residence life at all. I wasn't an RA, um, any of those things. And so being a, an RD was really not in my plan at all. Probably coming back to Sioux Falls College wasn't originally in my plan. I, I, I actually applied to be an admissions counselor right after graduating and wasn't chosen, okay. which I did not like. I like to be picked, <laughs> no. And um, so then I thought maybe my time here was done and so I was ready to kind of move on until um, a little bit later when I called Dennis up and said, hey, I need a job. And so he was the one that kind of forced you into, hey, I need an uh, RD, mm -hmm. and that's how that, that blossomed? Well, I, ca I came, you know, this is my fifth year, so I came a few years ago as the assistant campus pastor, really part-time, and then it just has grown from there. All right. And I understand that you're, this will be your last year as re uh, a resident director in Sullivan Hall, correct? Possibly. Possibly. Right. There's, so. there's a change there. Maybe there's a slight opening that I would stay. We're in discussions about that currently. And what is that? I hear there's another job that they're moving you up to? M possibly. <laughs> <laughs> this, is all, this is all possibility. Exactly. We're in negotiations basically about what does Karen Sumner do on <laughs> campus next year? What responsibilities will I have? What will I have to give up to do new things? So will, thing. will one affect the other? Yes. Right. Yes, I think so. If if um, I feel like the responsibilities that I'm being given are too much to be a good RD and do my job, then I probably will leave the dorm. All right. And do you think that will have an impact on how you interact with students? 
Yes, and I think that's my hesitation. Okay. Because I really like living with students and being around all the time. And so I'm nervous that if I leave the dorm, that changes my, my accessibility dramatically. And I remember when I didn't live on campus and being involved, and it was not a big deal, but I, having lived on campus, I think it would be hard to go back. And do you think that there is a somewhat uh, short lifespan of resident directors on campus? Because we had like the Larsons last, left last year, the Cones are now going to be moving on, mm -hmm. and you possibly? Right, right. Well, it's typically a very transitional job, I would say, on most campuses. Although resident directors are seen as professionals, I believe it's kind of a professional step in a certain direction that you would be moving on to another higher um, responsibility in residence, residence life at another university. So typically, it's a very transitional job. We, I think, have done a great job of keeping the Boyles, the Larsons were here for a long time, the Cones have actually been here for a long time as well. So we're lucky, I think. And are there any other candidates other than you mm -hmm. for that Sullivan job? There are some great people that I know would apply if the opportunity was mm -hmm. presented. That's kind of the challenge of what my decision comes down to is if I go, then someone else can't do it. And I think there are great people who would be an option. And you definitely have some big shoes to fill, not just meaning you have big feet. <laughs> too, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for coming in, Karen. And coming up after the break, we have the Styles Report, so stick around. Not for sports. For only the second time in school history, the University of Sioux Falls men's golf team will be headed to the Regional Golf Championships. Freshman Jim Walsh fired an even par 72 both days of the 36-hole tournament to lead USF to a third-place team finish in the GPAC Men's Golf Championships held at Emwood Golf Course here in Sioux Falls. Walsh's second place individual finish is the best ever by any USF golfer during a GPAC championship tournament. The NAIA Region 3 tournament will be held in Fargo, North Dakota at the Oxbow Country Club on April 30th and May 1st. The University of Sioux Falls baseball team is in the process of wrapping up their regular season and are getting hot at just the right time. Currently, the Cougars are in fourth place in the GPAC with a conference record of 13-7 and, and have won five of their last eight games, including three in a row. USF will look to carry their winning streak into next week's GPAC conference tournament in Hastings, Nebraska. The games kick off on Thursday and will run through Sunday. Well, after a brief hiatus from the spotlight, we now welcome back College Week's own Matt Stiles. In this week's edition of the Styles Report, Matt takes a look at one place you'd never usually find him, the Mears Library. Hi there. You caught me reading my favorite text, Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature. It's great for short reads, especially on a Sunday afternoon. As you can tell by my last pack and my varsity jacket, Hanson Beavers, what up? But I'm a top-notch athlete. But I do recognize that reading is fun. Demental. As a college student myself, I know that many students don't utilize the blessing that is the library. And they don't seek out the hidden treasures that can be found here. So today, I'm going to help. We're here in the deepest, darkest part of the library. And I found some good treasures. Take this one, for instance. Victorian women. It's about women named Victoria. And apparently there's lots of them. I'm going to read it right now. There's not one lady in here named Victoria. Stupid. Many college students need to use big words and know their definitions, which brings us to treasure number two, the library dictionary. Let's see what word the dictionary has in store for us today. One of my favorite treasures is the New York Times. Back when people in New York were giants. This 
this fire extinguisher here sure is a hidden treasure. Because if there was a fire in the library, I wouldn't know where to find it. Our last treasure deserves honorable mention. It's the nearly life-size replica of the planet Earth. This must be what God sees. Those are just some of the treasures that can be found here in the USF library. But I need to get back to reading my favorite text. I hope you found this experience to be as much enjoyable as I have. For USF College Week, I'm Matt Stiles. Thanks, Matt. Time now for another USF movie moment. This week, the guys checked out the new British action movie parody, Hot Fuzz. Here's Jordan Erickson and Rob Mikowitz. Welcome to College Week Movie Moment. I'm Jordan Erickson. I'm Rob Mikowitz. And this week we're reviewing Hot Fuzz. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Hot Fuzz uh, is a uh, movie with British dry humor. It's about a cop who is, uh, he embarrasses all the other officers by being the best cop and making more arrests than everybody else. And he's shipped off to a small town where he'll be less noticed. Um, and he just gets suspicious over some accidents that keep happening that actually are murders, possibly. Uh, I don't know. What would you think of it? I actually really enjoyed the movie. I mean, I love British humor, and uh, it's super dry. It's from the same guys who created Shaun of the Dead. So if you like any that kind of same vein of humor, uh, semi-parody, it was pretty good, I thought, anyway. What do you think? first hour and 15 minutes of the movie was just back and forth, back and forth. No solid plot line was really set. Uh, I just figured, I think it was a w waste of $8, and I wouldn't recommend renting it either. Can't believe you said that. But, you know, that's okay, and I can understand. The beginning does get a little long, but there's a lot of good setup with between the two characters, between Nicholas Angel, the super cop, and uh, his kind of sidekick, I who's, also, I thought was pretty funny, it in was, my opinion. It, it, it was funny, but I think it was also more uh, mocking American culture, too, with like the John Wayne aspect and the Rambo aspect going on. There was definitely that factor in there, but I kind of think it wasn't so much mocking as it was a tribute to those movies. And so, if you've seen any of those movies, Point Break, Bad Boys, Bad Boys 2, anything like that, you'll probably enjoy the movie, at least to some degree. You have to like British humor, too. Yeah. yeah you, Which apparently, you know, it, it hits and it misses. Hits and it misses. Hits and it, I wouldn't recommend it, though. So I'd give it 5 out of 5 stars. Give it a negative 5. Oh! This has been College Week Movie Moment. I'm Jordan Erickson. I'm Rob Mickwitz. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, guys. Well, that wraps up another edition of USF College Week for Abby Satter. I'm Alex Seinert. We'll leave you now with a funky fresh video essay from College Week's Kyle Steggers. But first, for all of us here at College Week, I'd like to say thank you, Alex, for your dedication to the show these past years. This is Al's last show here before he graduates, so thank you. And thanks for watching. Thanks, Al.